Today I'm gonna show you how I build my shadow display and how you can make one too. I'm turning mine into a really cool clock, but you can set it up however you want. And since the whole thing is open source, you can grab it and play around. I've dropped a link to the project page in the description below. So check that out and let's get started. This project is a spin-off of another electromechanical display I made. Check it out here. In that version, turning segments on and off was done by rotating two color flap. This time around, the segments work differently. An element, let's call it a solenoid plunger, slides in and out to activate or deactivate a segment. Both versions of the display can be configured however you like. You can use as many digits as you want and add any kind of separator, colon, dot, dash or whatever. That means you can use it for all sorts of cool stuff. I set up mine as a clock. So I went with four digits and a colon in the middle. Also, don't sweat that my front panel of the display is all in one piece. If you don't mind the divider line between modules, you can build them separately and then hook them up the way I did in the original project. I was just aiming for the sleekest and most uniform looking clock possible. But that's just me. You don't have to do it the same way I did. The schematic and PCB layout are exactly the same as previously, so I won't dive too deep here. I'll just highlight the main points, but I highly recommend checking out the original video, right after this one of course. The brains behind the project is an ESP32. It handles segment control and Wi-Fi communication with the web application or something like Home Assistant. To control the coils I'm using edge bridges. Their job is to send current in one direction or the other, effectively changing the magnetic pole of the coil. Each edge bridge needs two GPIOs to control it, meaning you'd need a whopping 14 GPIOs per module. So to build a clock with four modules, you'd need 56 GPIOs, which is absolutely ridiculous. That's why I'm using shift registers. They reduce number of GPIOs needed down to just three, no matter how many modules your display has. I also added a real-time clock with battery backup. So after setting it once, the clock can run completely offline. Even if the power goes out, it'll keep track of time and automatically sync up again when the power returns. This project's PCB were fabbed by GLC PCB and they happen to be a sponsor of this video, which I am super grateful for. GLC PCB is my go-to PCB manufacturer. I've been using them for years and in that time they've cranked out dozens of my projects and I've never had a single issue. The quality and customer service are absolutely top-notch. The ordering process is insanely easy. You head to their website, upload your Gerber files, gather form, Pick a few options like quantity, solder mask color and surface finish. As you can see the price for 5 boards is really reasonable, especially for 4 layer boards. Once you place the order, you have the boards at your doorstep in just a few days. Thanks GLC PCB! In the original project an active segment was white and inactive one was black, just like the rest of the enclosure. This time everything's white. so. How am I supposed to tell if the segment is on or off? Great question. It's all about light, or rather shadow. An inactive segment sits flush with the front panel. An active one pops out a few millimeters to cast a shadow. This design unfortunately has its drawbacks. For example, it won't be easily readable under all lighting conditions or from every angle, but put it in the right spot relative to window or lamp, and damn, it's gonna look freaking awesome. To maximize readability, a few things matter most. The front panel needs to be smooth, uniform and white, and the segments should be as invisible as possible when they are off. Traditional FDM printing just isn't precise enough. For the segments to move freely, they have to be quite a bit smaller than the holes, so there's a significant and visible gap. On top of that, you'll see the pair matters, which ruins the look even more. MSLA printing is definitely better, but it has limited print area. 
This might be fine for you if you plan to split display into separate digits. But as I said, I wanted my clock to be single continuous piece with no visible splits on the front panel. And that's where my CO2 laser comes in. This guy. It's basically made for cutting all kinds of plastic like acrylic. Since the cutting surface is way smoother than with the 3D printing, I was able to tighten the gap between segments and the front panel. That means when the segment is off and you look from the right angle, it's barely visible, which was exactly what I was going for. This X2 laser was actually sent to me by the manufacturer, so I didn't have to pay for it. But honestly, if I didn't have it right now, I'd seriously be thinking about getting one, because it insanely expands what I can do in my workshop. The movement is generated by an electromagnet built into the PCB. Running current of the coil attracts or repels permanent magnet attached mechanically to the segment. By happy accident, really. there's a hole in the PCB at the center of each coil. Totally unused before, now super handy. It lets the magnet sit under the board, thinner design, and gives the moving segment two support points to prevent jamming. I covered this in detail in the original project, so here's a quick rundown of the key parts. To program your display, you will need a cheap USB UART adapter like this one from Amazon. In the video description, you'll find a link to an article detailing the programming process step by step, along with all the necessary files. Once programmed, the device is practically plug and play. On the first setup, it'll run in Wi-Fi access point mode, letting you to connect via any laptop or smartphone to set it up with your local network. This makes communication easier and allows firmware updates directly from the internet. After that, the adapter isn't needed anymore. You can toss it to a drawer. Alright, let's talk about the web app itself, which took me way more time than I'd like to admit, but at the end of the day, I'm totally stoked with how it turned out. In the center, you'll see a graphic representation of your display. It shows exactly how many modules you have attached. The ESP32 scans that on boot and tells the app. The display can run in a bunch of different modes, depending on what you want to show and how you want to do it. There's a list below with all the options. 
You can select manual, MQTT, timer, clock. This is the one I'll be using on my display and custom API. But that's not all. You can run several modes at once in parallel. To do that, just split the display into groups by clicking the little red plus icon between modules to add a separator. It doesn't matter which one you pick. They all behave the same. You can add as many as you like. And if you want to remove it, just click on it. You'll see the mode dropdown splits up too. Now each group can rack its own mode. A quick note. After my last video, some people got confused about physical separators versus app separators. The physical ones are transparent electrically, so the ESP doesn't see them. They are purely visual. To separate hours from minutes, days from months, etc. In the app, however, adding a separator actually creates a functional group boundary. I added different separator types, so the app looks like your real display. But functionally, it just defines groups. Alright, let's set up my clock. I need two groups, one for hours and one for minutes. So I need to divide the display into two groups. I'll pick a colon as a separator. In the clock mode, I choose my time zone and select hours for the first group. In the second one, I choose a minute. And that's about it. Everything's set. Now I just need to send the configuration to the display and my clock is ready to roll. Thanks for sticking around till the end, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out that previous video next. It's packed with extra details I didn't cover here. So, see you there?